Good morning, everyone. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good to see you this morning. Hard to believe it's November 22nd already, but it is the last Sunday of the church here on our church calendar, and, and this is the day when we look uh, forward to the last day of time, when Jesus returns and this world ends and he takes us home. And uh, Traditionally, that's what we look at, and uh, so today we'll talk about the sheep and the goats when Jesus returns and he separates his people from uh, everyone else. A few announcements for you this morning. They're finally picking up. You can tell the holidays are here, I guess. Uh, poinsettia orders. Uh, um, if you have a bulletin, they're the pink slip. Otherwise, you can stop by the church and fill one out. And the, the cost is $10 for your choice of red, white, or pink. And the orders are due in by December 13th. Uh, also, uh, if you haven't been into the building here lately, uh, the ladies have added items to their annual bazaar, and, and so they have some stuff out there since we didn't have the bazaar this, this fall. But there are things in the narthex that you can look at and purchase, and that'll be going on through the 20th of December. And so just to let you know about that, if you'd like to stop by during the week and pick some up. Also, Toys for Tots began yesterday, and uh, we did have some items dropped off. And uh, the Toys for Tot hours are on Saturdays and Sundays um, from 12 to 2 p.m. And um, uh, you can stop by. Also, we need volunteers who would like to come and, and uh, help set up a table and boxes and, and collect donations as people come by. So if you would like to do that, uh, please uh, check the announcements and see how to do that. In our prayers this morning, we uh, pray for Doug, who's recovering, for Lisa, who's recovering, and also for Sue. And uh, flowers are placed in celebration of uh, Mickey Clausen's birthday to the glory of God. And, and birthdays this week that we're celebrating are Stephanie Olson and Mickey Clausen. And I think that's it. Why don't we begin with our first hymn? <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. For the Lord is a great God. O come, let us worship and bow down. For, For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his hand. Indeed, brothers and sisters in Christ, our Heavenly Father has called us to be his people. He has led us to green pastures and still waters. Yet there have been times when we have treated our fellow sheep with disdain, when we have wandered away from our shepherd. But our good shepherd does not abandon us, and we confess our sins before him and one another. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have wandered away from you. We confess that we have acted shamefully toward our brothers and sisters in Christ. We have sinned in our thoughts, words, and actions. We have failed by our inactivity. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, O Lord, that we might follow you through the green pastures and still waters of everlasting life. Our Heavenly Father has heard your confession and sent his only Son, Jesus, to be our Good Shepherd. Jesus searches for each one of his sheep. He brings back those who have strayed. He binds up the injured. He even lays down his life for his sheep. By Christ's death and resurrection, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are sought by our shepherd. We are forgiven in Christ. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. with our eyes 
fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. reading for the last Sunday of the church year is from the 34th chapter of Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered out on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravine, and in all the inhabitable places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the fistfuls of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God, the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he is, has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subject under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is expected to put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him, who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. <laughs> According to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, 
and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and to give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous, into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now confess our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the children's message. Now, I know there's not a lot of children here so today, so you will be my children. Unfortunately, you are very good Lutherans, and you are far away from me, and the pictures that I'm going to show you are tiny. But this is the one that we film for the YouTube service. So, we are going to talk about the story of sheep. But, before we do that, Joe, are we fuzzy? Sorry. Okay, so pause that. I want you guys to figure out and tell me which ones are goats and which ones are sheep. So, my friends up here, this one here, goat sheep. or sheep? Sheep. Oh, for one. Oh, for one. Oh, for one. That's okay. Right here. Right here. Talk amongst yourselves. This guy here, again, good Lutherans that you are. This one's. What do you think? Goat or sheep? Sheep. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. One for two. One for two. Joe? Joe? This guy here? Right on the bottom here? Uh, I'm guessing goat. You would be guessing incorrectly, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Back here. Back here. What are we, what are we thinking right here? This, this guy on the top. Sheep. Sheep! There we go. There's the winner. There we go. We're two for. We're batting 50% here. This is, our, this is our moment here, guys. Okay, right here, in the middle. Sheep. Okay, we lost another point. Okay, save us in the back here. Give us 50% here. Right on the hand. Okay, sheep. Fortunately, that's a goat. So, it is tough to tell the difference between a sheep and a goat. 
And our different lessons today kind of tell us what separates a sheep from a goat. Now, if we just look at the gospel, it might be, oh, the things that they do. That's what shows us what a goat and a sheep is. But it's more than that because God has already separated the goats from the sheep before he starts talking about the things that they do. If we look at the psalm uh, it's the, that we read back and forth to each other, it says, For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. So what makes us sheep is that we are his. So the story of the sheep is that he has chosen us and he has made us his own. And then we live out our lives serving those around us. So the thing that saves us isn't that we are so good. The thing that saves us is that we are his. Can you all do a repeat after me prayer for the people at home? And hopefully YouTube, you've unpaused it by now. If you haven't, it's going to be awkward. So pray with me. Dear God, thank you for making us yours. Keep the us in that faith. Amen. We'll sing the next time.
Sometimes they both are just as honored as the other. And so sometimes it is hard to distinguish a sheep from a goat, unless, uh, like out by my house, we have a sheep farmer who's got all white fluffy sheep, and then his neighbor has goats in a pen, and they're all black and brown with their horns and the bright yellow eyes, you know what they are on a goat. And so those are pretty easy to tell the difference. But remember that a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And so there's more to the meaning of sheep and goats than just uh, us looking at them on a farm. If you just look at the text at face value, it seems like we're going to go to heaven based on our good works, based on the amount of good things we've done to the hungry and thirsty, the strangers, the naked, those in prison, the sick. And I guess if that is the case, then based on your actions during these last several months of being locked down and not really being able to see your neighbors, would you get into heaven if Jesus returned this morning? Were you good enough? Did you do enough over the last nine months? Have you measured up to God's standards? Now this can be one of the most disconcerting texts in scripture, can't it? It leaves us wondering, do we measure up? Am I one of the sheep? Or am I one of the goats? Have I done enough? You see, in this text, Jesus speaks about what will happen when the world as we know ends. He speaks about a coming judgment, and a judgment where the eternity of all people will be determined. He speaks about a time when everything that Americans value most, their nice cars, their new homes, their, their good jobs, the latest games that they can play, or their clothing, Jesus speaks about a time when none of that is going to mean a thing. The only thing that will matter is, will I be on Jesus' left as a goat, or am I going to be on his right as a sheep? Now in our parable, one of the things I picked up is that it's obvious that the people on Jesus' left are shocked to learn that they've missed the boat, that they didn't do enough. They didn't have a clue that they didn't measure up. They couldn't have known mainly because they never took the time to notice, I think. There, there are so many in this day and age that live self-satisfying lives in the face of all the human suffering and need around them, in the face of neighbors and friends and co-workers who don't know anything at all about Jesus. And most people just don't care. They're just too busy to even worry about it. I think there's going to be a lot of consternation and confusion on Judgment Day. Many people who have grown up in church and many who grew up living beside people who called themselves Christian will be confused at Jesus' words. Confused because those who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior will not understand why they've been tossed to the side as goats. And I have no doubt that many of these people will be able to rightly claim that they've done better and more works than their Christian neighbor. I had a really good friend I used to work with who was Hindu, and I can tell you right now, he's a much nicer person than I am. He did a lot more works than I did. He was always helping people. And just look at some of the great people in our world. For example, just a couple, Mahatma Gandhi, all that he did for mankind, and Bill Gates, who's given millions and millions and millions away to help children around the world and to help charities. You see, there are all kinds of nice, people on this planet. But you know, in this day and age, even many churches have stopped focusing on the Great Commission, have stopped worrying about the gospel, and they spend the majority of their time trying to do good things, trying to stop social injustice, and attempting to eliminate poverty from mankind. There are so many who have done great things when it comes to feeding and clothing the poor. Do you actually think your good works can measure up to everything Bill Gates has done for his neighbor. You see, brothers and sisters, this is where many people miss the real meaning of Jesus' words of warning in this text. And as we know, Scripture always interprets Scripture when we read the Bible. And it can mess up our faith if we pull passages out of context and just pull this out and make it look like we have to do good works to earn our way to heaven. You see, the evidence of our so-called good works is really 
not good works that get us to heaven, but they are signs of God's saving grace in our lives. The reason our good works are a sign of faith is because God chooses to accept our good works as a sign of our faith in his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible makes it very clear that not only does God choose to accept our good works and deeds as done to his son, he also chose before the foundations of the world were formed to accept that because Jesus kept God's law perfectly, so have we. He puts that on us. God has chosen to accept that because Jesus died on the cross for all sins, that our sins have been paid for. God has chosen that because Jesus rose from the dead, we will rise again also and live forever. Now, we haven't actually done any of those things, have we? But for our sake, God sent his own son into the world to complete everything necessary for our salvation. And because Jesus did everything perfectly and completely, everyone who believes in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior is forgiven and restored as perfect children of God. That's why our piddly good works that we do are considered worthy and righteous in God's eyes. It's all because of the work that Jesus did on our behalf. Brothers and sisters, when, when we who claim the name Christian truly understand all that Jesus put up with as he lived and suffered and died for us when he came to earth, when we understand what Jesus did on our behalf, how can we not but want to do good works in his name? How can we not want to tell everybody we know about the wonderful works of Jesus? How can we not invite our friends and family members, our neighbors, our co-workers, yes, even strangers, to come to church and hear about the wonderful things God has done for us? Our Lord reminds us this morning that he has also prepared a kingdom for those who believe and trust in him. We need not fear his return, brothers and sisters, no matter what happens in the world around us or what's going to happen in the future, because Jesus has forgiven all our sins. You will be found at his right hand. You will, re will receive the kingdom that God has prepared for you. And our great shepherd of the sheep, Jesus Christ, has loved you so much that he planned your salvation and your reward before the foundation of the world. You are a sheep that your God has been waiting for a long time to receive into heaven. In fact, he's been waiting since time began. So knowing all that Jesus has done for us, all that he has done on the cross and through his resurrection, may we go from here today comforted, encouraged, full of faith to live for him, full of excitement and joy to tell others about him because we know what he has done, and we know what awaits those who believe in him. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, your promise, you promised to seek the lost. And we pray for all those who have wandered away from your church. We pray that you would strengthen us to reach out to them, to receive them with open arms and open hearts when they return home. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear to our cry. Lord, you promised to strengthen the weak. Send your strength and courage to all those who need it, to the aging, the lonely, the tired, and the vulnerable. Protect and defend them from the wolves of this world. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear to our cry. Lord, you promise to feed your sheep with good pastures. Raise up faithful servants and shepherds to share the nourishments of your word and sacraments with all your sheep. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear to our cry. Lord, you promise to rescue your flock from all enemies. Guard and keep us from the enemies of sin, death, and Satan. Lead us away from temptation and always closer to the arms of our Good Shepherd. Hear our prayers, O Lord. And give ear to our cry. Lord, you promised to bind up the injured. 
Bring your healing to all those who suffer now through injury, illness, and oppression. And especially this morning, we lift up to you Doug and Sue and Lisa. Heal them according to your good and gracious will. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear to our cry. Lord, by your word, you have told us that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. As we await the return of Jesus and the resurrection of the dead, we still grieve and mourn when the enemy of death strikes our friends and families. Be near all those who are mourning the death of loved ones. Comfort them with the hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give, Give ear, ear to our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn.